Hey everyone, welcome back to So You Say You're Married. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that can be a little touchy, but let's face it, with relationships one isn't. And this time it's a lot about you, not so much about your spouse. It's called being self-aware. So let's dive in. Okay, in this episode, I want to get straight to the point. We're going to cut to the chase really fast, and I've got four points that I want to cover in this episode. The first point is, what is self-awareness in the first place? What does that even mean to be self-aware? And it simply means to understand your own thought process so that you can control the actions that you put out into this world. What do I mean by that? It means when you have a thought, let's say that a stressful situation occurred in your life and you wanted to act out of strictly anger, for example, and you weren't exactly in the right. You didn't have a really good reason to be angry. You knew that you were angry. You didn't know why you were angry and you knew that this wasn't really the proper reaction, but it's going to come out anyway and you're going to find a reason to justify it, right? If you know that, if you can pinpoint that, you can be aware of something like that, that is being self-aware because that means instead of acting out of anger, you can check yourself and you can choose to act in a different way, in a way that's going to be less hurtful to the other person, but also logical and reasonable so that you both can come to a better conclusion or solution for the situation at hand. So how do you become self-aware? How do you get into the habit of being more self-aware about yourself and about your actions? It's not easy. It's not an easy task. It's not something that can be done quickly. It is not something that people like to do. And it is stressful because it really, it points out the really good sides of you, the points of you as far as your thought processes and your reactions are concerned. But it also points out the bad and the frustrating and the things that we need to work on. And ain't nobody like to do that right? We don't like to admit that we're wrong or that we're at fault. We really want to be in the right all the time because we've been taught to think that when we're wrong or when we fail at something, it's, it's bad. It's not bad to be wrong. It's not bad to fail. What's bad is when you know that and you don't turn it into a learning experience to better yourself, to better your relationships with someone else. That's what's bad. It's when you don't act on it at all to make positive progress in your life. So back to learning how to be self-aware. When you start to feel an emotion bubble up inside of you, if you're in a situation, let's, let's take marriage for example. If you're in a situation with your spouse and you know things are getting a little tense and things are kind of about to escalate into an argument of some sort, and you feel frustration and anger starting to build in your stomach and move its way up to your chest, and eventually it's gonna come out of your mouth. When it starts to bubble, when you feel it in the pit of your stomach, that's when you go, mm, okay, I really need to step back and I need to evaluate this because I'm about to lose it. And I don't want to, I don't wanna fight, but I need to know if I can validate the feeling that I'm having or if I'm just being frustrated because I don't fully understand this feeling and I'm gonna project that on the person in front of me, namely my spouse, okay? This is how a lot of marriages have problems. So if you can check that and you understand it, let's, let's say you feel the anger bubbling up inside of you and you're like, okay, she just told me that we aren't going to be able to go on that vacation that we had planned because her mom needs some help selling her house. And instead of taking that vacation time, you're going to have to go to a vacation over to your mother-in-law's house and help get that ready, right? Okay. That would upset just about anyone because you'd be dreaming about the beach and all of a sudden you got to go over to mom's. So when you feel that frustration and you feel that anger start bubbling up inside of you, stop and go, okay, I'm getting angry. I'm getting pissed off. I don't want my vacation to be ruined, but this is something that can't be helped. We've had this discussion. It's a situation we can't get out of, and we're going to have to make the best of what we've got. So instead of lashing out and yelling at your wife, instead go, okay. 
I don't like this. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like this. I'm not happy about it. I'm going to make the best of it, but don't expect X, Y, and Z from me during this whole process. Okay. But because this is what we have to do, this is what I have decided I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to act. I'm going to be rational. I'm going to be mature. I'm going to make the best of the situation and I'm going to do our best to have a good time, even if we're not going to be at the beach and we're going to be helping your mom getting a house ready to sell. Versus if you don't recognize that anger bubbling up inside of you and you allow it to bubble and you allow it to fume and you allow it to come out of your mouth before you check it, that's when hurtful things are said. That's when tension rises. That's when things escalate. Okay. So being self-aware, learning how to be self-aware is really recognizing that there's a situation where your emotions are going to take hold, recognizing what those emotions are, rationalizing why you feel that way, and then controlling your response so that you control what comes out of your mouth, which in turn controls your actions that you will do later, which has a ripple effect because when you do that, other people's actions are going to change or be different because of yours. If you come at someone with hostility, they're going to be hostile. If you come at someone calm and rational, they're going to be calm and rational. It's an easier way to control a situation and take control of your life. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger, but we're not going to dive down that rabbit hole right now. We're just going to go ahead and move on to step three. And step three is exactly what you could guess. How does being self-aware help our marriage? If you think, well, my husband is always in the wrong. He is always the one that never follows through. He doesn't finish his projects. He never listens to me. He's not going to change his behavior. Why am I the, always the one that's going to have to change my behavior? Yada, 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 yada. It goes on and on and on, right? He feels the same about you on so many different ways. So what do you do to change that? You become self-aware. When you start badgering your husband because he hasn't done the things that you want him to do, whether it's valid or not is not the point. When you start doing that, catch yourself. You know that he's going to react the same way every single time because he's used to it. So catch yourself, stop yourself and think, okay, what can I do to gain a different result? What can I say? What actions can I produce? to gain a different reaction out of him that is going to be a positive reaction. Check yourself, right? Break those habits that you have. It's not easy. It's not. It is not something you can just flip a switch and boom, you're good to go. This is something that takes practice and it takes recognition. And the first time you do it, it'll be like a light bulb went off because you'll be like, oh, I know what this feeling is. I know what it feels like. And I'm not going to start yelling at him for watching football instead of doing the laundry. Instead, we're going to have a discussion about it. Or I'm going to ask him, hey, babe, when the game's over, can you go do the laundry while I'm over here doing X, Y, and Z? Would really appreciate the help. That's all it's going to take, right? But you have to catch yourself. Instead of going, why are you watching football again? I asked you to do the laundry three hours ago and you haven't even moved. You haven't done anything that I've asked you to do this week and I don't understand why it's so hard. Blah, 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 blah. You see my point? Okay. So it, it's valuable in your marriage. It's valuable in every relationship that you have, but it's valuable in your marriage because if both of you learn how to be aware of your feelings, then you're suddenly aware of the actions that you're going to take which mean that you have a stronger control over the results that you're going to get from those actions. Where does the ripple effect come from? Those results are no longer a negative connotation on your marriage. Instead, you have positivity in your marriage. You have progress. You have growth together because you were able to dictate and control your results based off of your own actions that started with your thought process. It's pretty cool and it works really, really well. And that is a huge difference between successful couples and unsuccessful couples. Unsuccessful couples are still in the victim mentality and they only want to blame and point fingers. That doesn't get anyone anywhere. But the successful couples are the ones that take a step back, recognize their behavior, and decide to choose a different result that is going to be positive and progressive thinking. So with that, I told you this is going to be a quick episode. That wraps up self-awareness and exactly what that means. So again, what is self-awareness? 
How do we become self-aware and what does it mean to your marriage? Why should you do it? And with that, I hope you got a lot of value out of this episode. I will talk to you guys next week in So You Say You're Married. Until next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching my videos. I really hope you enjoyed it and got a lot of value out of it. Please leave me a comment at the end of this video telling me what you think and telling me what you'd like to hear. I really want to get to know you guys and deliver exactly what you want. Please subscribe to my channel. That will encourage me to continue making videos. And just so you know, videos are released every Wednesday at midnight Eastern Standard Time so you can keep up with the latest updates. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Coach Cody, and I look forward to connecting with you guys soon. Talk later.